Amidst the fierce winter storm that blanketed New Jersey, Rutgers kept the rack hot with exciting Big Ten basketball action. Rutgers has played really well. Daniels ties the game at 24. Coach C. Vivian Stringer and her Scarlet Knights welcome the seventh-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes for a much-anticipated rematch with their home court winning streak on the line. And she gets it right before the first quarter buzzer goes off. Tyler Skate. And Eddie Jordan's team made a strong stand against Iowa, the ninth-ranked team in the country. Patient move by Williams, and Rutgers has its first lead of the night. Sending a clear message to the Big Ten that when you face the Knights, you better be ready for a fight. Right. My Corey Sanders, who leads this team in assists. Also coming up, we'll hear from the players on why they believe in their coaches. So, you know, there's a tremendous amount of pride for Eddie Jordan to be back here coaching his alma mater and ushering Rutgers into the Big Ten Conference. I love the fact that he came to his old program. He's trying to rebuild it, and I, I definitely want to be a part of that story legacy of bringing Rutgers back. Like, she literally, like, eat, sleep, live basketball. She's just a different breed. And we'll welcome freshman Jonathan Laurent back from injury. He's sure to be an impact player who knows what it takes to win in this highly competitive conference. Making an impact all season long for the Rutgers women is shot blocking sensation Rachel Holliday, who has established herself as a team leader and a dominant force in the paint. All that and more is coming up on this week's episode of the Rutgers Basketball Story. Let's go. Come on, gotta get better. You gotta get better. If you prepare yourself now, when the time comes for you to perform, you will be ready. The Rutgers basketball story is brought to you by AmeriHealth New Jersey, the exclusive health care provider of Rutgers Athletics. For health insurance that pays, it's AmeriHealth New Jersey. Legacy of experience, three NBA teams he's led, the Sacramento Kings, the Washington Wizards, and the Philadelphia 76ers. So you know there's a tremendous amount of pride for Eddie Jordan to be back here coaching his alma mater and ushering Rutgers into the Big Ten Conference. We have a job to do. We stay together. Uh, we keep our spirits up. We, our coaches are good enough to keep our spirits up in practice, and we move forward. He's a great person to look up to. You know, he's played in the league, and he's coached his game. He was here at Rutgers, went to the Final Four in 1976, played in the league with one of the greatest like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Magic Johnson, won a championship, coached greats like Allen Iverson, Jason Kidd, Dwight Howard. Kobe Bryant, need I say more? He's just a really funny, nice coach, and he knows what he's talking about. So you always have to have your ears open to listen to what he says. Wow, Coach Jordan is like, a, there's a lot of things I could say. He's like really like a rock for this team. Just make sure we make improvements every day. Improve every day. It's been great having him around, you know, to go to for questions and, uh, and for guidance. Go again, Corey, up here. Good, good, good. Okay, all right. He's went to the NBA. He's coached on. The, he's coached at the NBA level. He could have stayed there, you know. Instead of staying there, you know, he came. He comes back, and you know, he's trying to. He's trying to like make big things happen here. We joined the Big Ten. That was a big improvement. We have like uh, the pieces now. Like you know, he did like a lot of incredible recruitment. He's doing you know whatever he's doing to make me the best player I can be, and that's all I can ask for. I really think he is getting me ready for the next level. You know, he talks to me a lot. Helps me. Uh, really developed me a lot from since I've came here. Come on, just touch. Nice touch. Nice touch. 
Go up and get it. So now, my, I'm sure I'm a better player, that's for sure. I can see it myself, and other people see it too. Woo. Lorenz, nice finish. Good night for Lorenz tonight. One of the things he said when uh, he was recruiting me, um, this is like his like one of his ultimate goals, you know. Right now we're in a tough predicament because we have a whole bunch of injured players. Well, a lot of us playing out of position, but you know we're doing what we have to do to survive. And it's been an injury ravaged season for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, especially in Eddie Jordan's front court. Shaquille Dorson, Ibrahim Ajalo, and Deshaun Freeman are all out for the season. That was announced on Monday after the Purdue game by Eddie Jordan. And then Jonathan Loren, who had just returned tonight after missing the last handful of games. Combined 48 games missed between four very talented guys. Playing through adversity, um, I think that's just life. No, no matter where you're at, you're going to face adversity. Um, I think no, there's no better teacher than adversity. Yeah, that's my biggest, the biggest thing that I learned here at Rutgers. That you don't give up, that you keep fighting, no matter what the score is. It builds up some resiliency, some toughness. Corey's learning what Division I basketball is about. Jonathan Lorenz learning what Division basketball is about. And that's important to us. They're the core of our young group that moves forward. Well, just the future of the program. I, I know it's not about myself. It's about these young guys um, bringing the right spirit to the game, changing the culture here, and um, building something great for the future. Eddie's a great coach. I think given the right amount of time, he's going to be able to get this program going. I love the fact that he came to his old program. He's trying to rebuild it, and I'm, I definitely want to be a part of that story legacy of bringing Rutgers back from where it used to be. I mean, just making it happen. Eddie Jordan's Scarlet Knights tried to rock the rack as they welcomed the ninth-ranked Iowa Hawkeyes. And for much of the first half, they did just that. Who gives to Peter Jock, who breaks the scoring seal. Why would you leave Peter Jock alone? That's another three and a timeout for Eddie Jordan. He's probably going to ask his guys that same question. After falling behind early, RU found their form and put together a stunning 14-4 run. A good feed by Bishop Daniels to get Rutgers on the board. Greg Lewis connected on a jumper. Omari Greer, who reached double figures for the fifth time this year, scored on the inside. Good cut by Greer. It's a one-point game. You said it, Coach. The energy is there tonight for Rutgers, and Iowa didn't want to get shell-shocked by what Rutgers is doing early. And freshman sensation Corey Sanders helped cut an 11-point deficit down to just one. Sanders got the step, lost the handle, and still recovered for the two. I really love watching Corey Sanders play. Laurent at the rim on the alley-oop and the feed from Greer. The up-tempo first half played nicely into Bishop Daniels' hands as RU tied the game for the first time. Daniels ties the game at 24. Oh, that's a great angle on the feed by Sanders to find Lewis. That's not an easy pass, and he made it. Tie game. And Rutgers took their first lead against the Hawkeyes when Mike Williams scored on a layup. Patient move by Williams, and Rutgers has its first lead of the night. The sophomore guard scored 17 to pace the Scarlet Knights. Giselle for Utah, not a good pass. Some rare Iowa turnovers. Here comes Good, and he finishes with the left hand. Every Rutgers player that has played tonight has scored, and we're tied again. DJ Foreman, who has the ability to flash to the basket, knocked down a floater to tie the ball game at 34. Foreman spinning inside, pretty finish with the left hand. Utah for three, knocks it down. Good the elbow. Offensive rebound for DJ Foreman. Rutgers has hit the offensive glass tonight. Despite trailing by eight at the break, Rutgers hung tough against the tough Hawkeyes early in the second half. And it was Mike Williams who took matters into his own hands. Position or anything, he just needs his feet to be set. Out of the gate, first five in the second half belong to the Scarlet Knights, and they're back within three. That's their first bucket. 
Nice pass to Loren. Look Corey Sanders who leads this team in assists. After Iowa started to pull away, Williams and Greer lit it up from downtown. Top 70 player. There's Mike Williams. To bring the home team back and cut a 17-point deficit down to eight. Another three. And Rutgers is within single digits. Omari Greer. And the rack comes alive. Vocal on defense. You see him out there pointing where to go. Woo. Lorenz. Nice finish. Good night for Lorenz tonight. Overall, Rutgers shot 48% from the field and scored 76 points. Both high watermarks for their Big Ten play this season. Even though the comeback came up short, there were plenty of good things to take away from this battle against an Iowa team which continued its outstanding start in Big Ten play. Case in point, the return of Jonathan Laurent. The freshman forward provided a spark with 14 points on 6 of 10 shooting. Jonathan Laurent, the freshman out of Orlando. He's missed the last four games with a concussion. Part of an injury ravaged Rutgers lineup this season. Three-star recruit out of high school. He's back in the lineup tonight. He practiced yesterday and still isn't in shape, but he's going to get minutes tonight to get him going. Here's Laurent. Good energy off the bench. Got his own miss and put it in. You see him out there pointing where to go. Ooh, Lorenz, nice finish. White's got three threes in this first half. Nice move there by Lorenz, going up and underneath the basket. Jonathan Lorenz, you know, that's been my roommate since I got here. Um, you know, we're both from Florida. You know, um, so I've been bonding with him uh, a little bit before, you know, we came here and since we've been here, definitely. Uh, he's just one of those guys, too, you know, has a great, you know, great personality, has, a, has that big smile. He was, to me, underrated as a recruit. Uh, he's got a lot of athletic skills that come so easy to him. And he's very respectful, very coachable. Um, the best player we have scoring around the rim. He's a, he's a very good guy, you know. He's kind of like, he acts like DJ in a way, you know. I see a little bit of DJ in him, but he's you know, he's very athletic. You know, he's able to put the ball on the floor. You know, he oh, he's also gives a spurt, especially with his dunks and stuff. You know, long rebound, good ahead to Loren. Look out! The defense has to make up for it, and a very well executed bounce pass by Good to Loren. He's one of those kids who you can tell wants to be here all all day, every day. He's in the gym, trying to get better. And I, I love his, his, his energy. I love his personality, man. He's just a, he's a nice person to be around. Laurent, good cut by Greer. It's a one-point game. Goes with a backdoor cut. Laurent at the rim, on the alley-oop, and the feed from Greer. He's the one kid that I think can make the NBA right now. Not right the second, but he's the one kid. Each of them have a chance, I guess. But right now, he has certain qualities that I see that can make that he can go pro. Yes, Sanders, that fall away jumper misses, but Laurent picks up the trash for Rutgers. Uh, my name is Jonathan Laurent, and uh, I wear number four. Rutgers takes the lead. Why do we huddle? It's not about me. It's about helping my team. Rutgers on three, one, two, three. Rutgers. Leave everything outside. Leave your personal things outside. This is what it's all about. The Rutgers basketball story is brought to you by AmeriHealth New Jersey, the exclusive health care provider of Rutgers Athletics. For health insurance that pays, it's AmeriHealth New Jersey. 
Vivian Stringer has had a brilliant career in both basketball halls of fame, inducted into Springfield in 2009. The only thing missing from her resume is a national championship, but she did take Cheney, Iowa, and Rutgers to the Final Four. In fact, took Rutgers there twice. Well, I mean, I think it speaks for itself. She's done it all. She's got lots of pros in the league. With the fifth pick. With the seventh pick. The New York Liberty. Houston Comets. Phoenix Mercury. Select Essence Carson. Cappy Pondexter. Batia Ajavon. Kiavon from Rutgers. It says a lot about Rutgers to have six players in the WNBA. I think it says a lot about Coach Stringer, how she taught us. Just playing for her has mentally prepared me for everything that I faced in my career. She's just a different breed. I was just so so proud of Coach because she's like the winning this coach here now, and she was the like winning this coach in the Big Ten, and it's just it's just she's amazing. Coach Stringer, <laughs> she's I've never met a woman with so much passion that coached the way she do. I mean, like she literally like eat, sleep, live basketball. <laughs> Coach Stringer is very funny. She's just. A bundle of joy, and then sometimes she could be really intense, make you not even want to play basketball no more, but then you just keep going, keep going, because the energy that she puts into it makes you want to go harder. She's one that, she, to me, she's the best coach in college basketball. We are in Piscataway, New Jersey, snowy Piscataway, where the game will go on despite the snowstorm yesterday. Number seven, Ohio State in town to take on the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. For the second time in two weeks, the Rutgers women battled Ohio State, this time on the Scarlet Knights home floor. Three gets it over to Copper. That is the tandem that we talked about. And it was a tenacious struggle in the first half with seven ties and 10 lead changes. With RU down by four late in the first quarter, Tyler Scaife closed the period in style. Scaife, there's the talent. And she gets it right before the first quarter buzzer goes off. Tyler Scaife. Sophomore Sharita Parker gave the Scarlet Knights the lead early in the second quarter by dialing long distance. And back it in. Brianna Canty joined the shootout with a trifecta of her own. It's Canty knocks one down. And right now, Rutgers has a lot of different players stepping up and contributing, and that's going to be huge for them to put points on the board. Scaife gave the home team a one-point lead with a little over two minutes remaining in the first half. Scaife back in the game, wants the ball. And she doubled her left hand and it went in. I thought she might have got bumped with great concentration and finished with the left. But the two teams headed to the locker room, tied at intermission. Seven ties and ten lead changes in the first half. The Buckeyes opened up a 16-point lead late in the third quarter. But Rutgers kept its focus and competitive edge. Sharita Parker buried a trifecta. And Brianna Canty made it five straight points for the Scarlet Knights. In the fourth quarter, the Ohio State lead mushroomed to 17 before once again, Rutgers rallied at the rack with a quick 9-2 burst. A Canty three ball started the charge. And that was Canty who delivered while this layup by Kalia Copper cut the margin to 10. Inside the Copper, who gets fouled and converts. And when Sharita Parker buried her fourth triple of the game, Rutgers sliced the Ohio State lead to single digits. But Ohio State proved too much in the closing moments, and they escaped the Garden State with a hard-earned win. Not easy, considering Rutgers had not lost a home game since November 19th. Great strength by Holliday. Here you see the baseline, you see how the defense drops? That big that's in that middle, if they dive, draw either draws the defense, or you can get it to them for an easy bucket. Holliday, watch her seal every time in the middle of against that zone. That's a terrific job inside. <laughs> And 
then on final day, we just talked about how she's a good shot blocker and she proved it. Rachel is, she, she's a character. Rachel. <laughs> she's a... Uh... She's a character. Rachel, that's my big sister, too. Our dads are real close. Um, I mean, she's always there to encourage me if I'm having a bad practice or if I'm having a bad game. She's always there to, you know, help me get up. And Rachel, she is just such an enthusiastic person. Like, she'll make the dullest day, like, shine bright and fill with so much energy. I know, like, whenever, like, we're having a hard time in the game and we're, like, losing and we're putting our heads down like she'll just come in the circle and be like guys like let's go pick your heads up let's win let's let's do it all and we're like okay let's go we get hype off of her she's crazy like stay down in the paint and so every time she just wouldn't get in front of me i just blew her up so i could just get buckets i mean points sorry i didn't say buckets <laughs> i don't know right just she's just funny to me <laughs> On a turnover, here comes Rutgers. Rachel, I, I think that she's a double double waiting to happen. And, and if that happens, then we've got even better news. I mean, I've never seen anybody block the ball like her. <laughs> Rachel is crucial on the blocking end. I would hate to play against her. <laughs> My name is Rachel Holloway, and now we're number one. For a long time, that Rutgers was a sleeping giant. The Rutgers basketball story is brought to you by AmeriHealth New Jersey, the exclusive health care provider of Rutgers Athletics. For health insurance that pays, it's AmeriHealth New Jersey. Founded before America's revolution. birthplace of college football, transforming the arts, humanities, teaching, thinking, research. It's where we are, where we've been, where we're headed, always forward. Rutgers, revolutionary for 250 years.